What is going on guys? Welcome back to Extreme Daily Driver, where we are always balling on a budget and wrenching our garage. We're really wrenching the garage today. Dude, check this thing out, man. It barely fits in here now. This thing's a beast. So as you guys know, in the last video, we went ahead and put a two inch lift on this, along with a whole bunch of other goodies. If you haven't watched that video, go down in the description. I'll put a link to it. But yeah, man, this thing is, this thing's gone beast mode. And uh, as a result, we have some rubbing. And it's really hard for me to show you here, so let me go ahead and jack this thing up, get the wheel off. Let me show you what the problem is and how we're going to fix it. All right, we got the wheel and tire off. Man, look how rad this thing is, huh? Man, this thing is beefy. Anyway, got this guy off, and let me show you what we're working with here. So, everything looks great under here, except <laughs> we are rubbing right here. Check it out, we already put a hole in it. And uh, this has only basically been like a week of driving with a lift. So as you can see, we got a little bit of a problem there, and it's really not that big of a deal for daily driving, but if we ever take this thing off-road, which we're planning on doing, and we get all sorts of suspension flex and articulation, then this rubbing is really gonna get kind of exaggerated and could cause a problem, especially on the passenger side. So we're gonna get in that side after we take care of the driver's side, but really, we're gonna be doing the pinch weld mod today. So if you don't know what the pinch weld mod is, basically behind this plastic cover, there is a seam that's been welded around the uh, wheel arch, and that seam sticks out a good uh, half inch, I guess. I haven't actually seen it myself. We're going to find out in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut some slits into that and we're going to hammer it over. And that's going to give us a significant amount of extra room under there. So when we make our turns, the wheel is no longer going to be hitting not only the plastic liner, but anything uh, body related. So um, it's a really kind of easy thing to do. It's maybe a little scary because you got to cut into your car a little bit. But honestly, it's super simple. There's nothing scary about it. You're not going to cut your car in half or anything like that. So anyway, let me grab some tools pull this plastic liner off, and we'll get to cutting. So in order to get behind this, we have to go ahead and remove the front of the liner. And the way you do that is you got these stupid kind of Chrysler rivets. You can actually pull them out. I just did one. And I use this tool. If you guys are fans of the channel, you know I use this tool for everything. I'll put a link down in the description. If you don't have one of these things, man, you gotta get it. It's an interior tool, but man, it works great on everything. So basically all I'm doing is getting it underneath here and then prying it off. All right, so most of these came out without a problem. A couple of them broke, but it's no big deal because I have a solution for that. So anyway, let's take a look what's behind the curtain here. And here you can clearly see the pinch weld that I was referring to, right? This is the guy here that's going to prevent our tires from uh, getting the room they need for when we turn the wheel and go off road. We also have a sensor back here that uh, probably should be relocated or maybe it's okay where it is. I haven't made a decision on that yet. And uh, we can really see now, <laughs> when I shine my light to the engine, my terrible valve cover oil leak. You see that back there? Yeah, I gotta change my valve cover gaskets. Okay, so I went ahead and relocated this guy out of the way for a minute. Just two screws hold him in place. You can see where he used to be. So then I drew lines as to where exactly I'm gonna make my cuts. Now, the more cuts you make, the easier it'll be to fold this over. And where I drew the lines, I hope you guys can see, are in between the actual spot welds. So these little circles here are where they welded. I don't want to drill through that. I want to drill in between them. So the more cuts we make, the easier it'll be to fold over. Um, really shouldn't be hard at all on this side. I'm going to go ahead and grab my little grinder with a cutoff wheel and start slicing this up. All right, now I got some vice grips on our first tab here. And let me see if I can bend it over how difficult it is. And you can see, it's kind of difficult. I'm a little surprised how hard it is to bend over. Now I may need to cut more, uh, a little deeper, or maybe I need to get a different bite with my vice grips. That might be the problem. Give me one second. All right, I got a bite a little higher. Still, still kind of difficult to do. All right, so that's pretty much the best I can do with just the vice grips. And uh, now we're gonna resort to sledgehammer and piece of wood um, see if we can do a better job of flattening that out I'm sure we're going to normally when this thing gets involved you know uh, stuff happens pretty quick now we're doing something It wasn't easy, man, but we got to check it out. Huh? Not bad, man. It, it, uh, it turned out pretty darn well. 
Now I'll tell you this, that metal it is not just, uh, you're not beating on a Miata. <laughs> you're beating on a Jeep, man. And that's some serious steel. That's, uh, I thought it fold over way easier than it did. So you can try the block of wood like I did, but you really just gotta go full on sledge, man. That's the only way to do it. So the bad side about using the sledge is, obviously if you miss, you could do some damage. I didn't miss, just be careful. Um, also, you don't have a lot of room in there to swing it. So it takes a little longer because you can't really get a good hack at it. Um, and yeah, it beats up the paint. So now what we gotta do is uh, clean the paint up a little bit with a little sandpaper and then uh, give it a little spray of um, just some primer and maybe a little paint. <laughs> All right, man, paint is dry and I reinstalled that sensor. What do you think of that? Huh? Dude, it turned out pretty darn good. So now all I gotta do is reinstall the uh, plastic liner and then driver's side's done. All right, everything's put back together and uh, in order to do the rivets here, you know, you could do it the stupid Jeep Chrysler way, which is buy their stupid rivet gun and then buy their stupid rivets and then you'd have the same problem all over again where you can't reuse the things. Or you could do it the smart Japanese way and just stick these things in here that basically hold together every single piece on every single Japanese car that there is. These things are reusable. I got a bag of like a bazillion of them right here. Um, I'll put a link down in the description, but yeah, you get this guy and then this guy goes on top of it and you can pop this guy out and reuse it. Super simple to do. So we aren't 100% finished yet. You know, we did create all the extra room back here, but in order to take advantage of that extra room, we need to pull this liner back. Okay, there are a bunch of different ways you can do that. But what we're gonna do today is we are going to use a self-tapping screw and a washer. This guy here, now these comers, these are stainless steel. I painted them black so they don't stick out too much. And then I'm gonna stick them right into here to help pull this liner back to give us the room that we need for when making turns. All right, driver's side's done. Check it out. Oh, not bad. Let me know what you guys think. Go ahead, comment down below. But uh, we gave ourselves a good, I'd say inch and a half extra room here. And I'll tell you what, the hardest part of this installation was installing this bolt back here because it's just, uh, just, just hard to get a drill through this plastic and then into the metal and have it all line up correctly. Um, I had to basically pull down on this a little bit. So I had to unhook the one fastener that goes in this area in order to make this work. But we have to make this work. This is the whole reason we're doing this, is to pull this plastic further back. And uh, this has got to happen. So in order for this to happen, the little uh, plastic uh, clip that goes here had to come out. All right, passenger side is pretty much done over here. One thing I wanted to point out to you guys is there is a plastic piece that extends past these coolant lines over here or heater lines, whatever the heck they are. They go to the rear of the car. And uh, this plastic sticks out a good deal. So you want to trim off as much as you can and to give you an idea how much I trimmed off, I probably should have done it before and after, but like here's a piece that I trimmed off. So yeah, it sticks out in a significant amount and that'll just kind of get in our way when we're trying to pull this plastic piece back. Also, when you're reinstalling the fender well, be careful where you're drilling your hole. You wanna be drilling into these coolant lines or anywhere in this vicinity. So you wanna drill right in here or maybe over here to help pull the liner back. All right, guys, how do we do? How do we do? Did we? Did we, did we pull it off? Is it better? Well, <laughs> passenger side, uh, I'm still hitting, but it's, it's much better. But yeah, still hitting. By the way, the way I did this one is I did a zip tie down below to pull it all back because I was scared of those AC lines or heater core lines or whatever kind of lines those are, so I didn't want to mess with them. So yeah, did a zip tie going to one of the uh, flaps that I made. <clears throat> So yeah, just sitting here. Now this side was never rubbing nearly as much as the other side. You can see it didn't wear through here. So hopefully this is gonna be okay. Now let's let's see how we did on the other side. That's the uh, that's the real side that we need to figure out, right? So let me go ahead and turn the wheel. All right, how do we do here? Oh man, still looks like we're touching a little bit. It's not nearly as bad as it was. And uh, I'm gonna say that it's only touching at full lock. I think I'm gonna straighten the wheel out a little bit here. Because we're at full lock right now. Let's see if we're touching here. This is kind of a normal... Okay, yeah, we got all the clearance in the world there. 
it's kind of a normal way I would back out. I rarely ever go full lock to lock. Um, so yeah, I would call that a mild success. So anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Drop a comment down below. If you guys have done the pinch weld mod before and you've gotten a better result than this, let me know. I've never done this before. So uh, I hope that gives you guys confidence that, hey, I've never done it before. I did a video on how to do it. Can't be too hard, right? So uh, don't let the pinch weld mod be something that scares you from doing a lift or putting big wheels and tires in your car because believe me, believe me, the benefits far outweigh the negatives. And uh, really today's job took a couple hours to do, but really was no sweat. I took my time, it was pretty darn easy. So uh, anyway, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, share this with anybody who's got Jeep Commanders or Jeep Ranch Cherokee or Toyota Tacoma because this is a popular mod for all those vehicles. They all have problems when you put bigger wheels and tires on them. And uh, we'll be back next Tuesday, man. Uh, next Tuesday, just so you know, we're gonna be live from SEMA. If you guys want me to go check out something um, at SEMA that you're interested in, let me know. If there's a manufacturer you're interested in hearing from, let me know because I will be going live. Anyway, guys, we'll see you next week. Later.